Hi, we're Sarah and Sunyan. Last episode, we arrived in Penang and began touring the streets of Georgetown. It didn't take long to see that this city had so much to see and so much to eat. In today's episode, we continue exploring the neighborhoods and hot spots around Georgetown. Let's go. First stop, Armenian Street. Located in the heart of Georgetown's UNESCO World Heritage Site, Armenian Street was originally named after the Armenian merchants who settled here in the early to mid 1800s. Today, the street is known for being one of the most charming and popular areas in the city, filled with galleries, cafes, street art, and cultural buildings. It didn't take long to see why the area is one of the top highlights in Georgetown. So we're on Armenian Street right now. This section of town is very touristy, but very, very aesthetic. And a lot of the street art can be found everywhere. So I noticed these wire ones seem to be like historic scenes. But a lot of the street art has these QR codes. So if you want to find information about the street art, you can just scan the QR code and it tells you the story of the street art behind us. Okay, so this says, whenever you look at trick shaws around town, a lot of them are written with a bicycle, but this street art behind me shows the traditional way of a person pulling the street car. Hand pulled trick shaws. When I was looking at the map, I was excited to find a cafe that had like a cake, but as we walked by, I see like five cafes selling like delicious cakes, so. I guess they're all around here, so you don't really have to pick one or two. You can just go in anywhere you want. Coffee lover and dessert lover is paradise. This is definitely the hip part of town. I feel like being a tourist, we can't really differentiate, okay, what is like an actual street art? But like, what is it just like random advertisement? Right. You know? Mm. There's like kind of a concert going on here. It looks like they're getting ready for a stage like performance. A performance, yeah. Yep. And right across from it, Looks like kind of a temple-esque praying area. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go to the jetty. Is this way? It's that way. In Penang, there's a town where there's like a floating jetty and people are actually living in those jetty and it's their everyday life. Apparently it became like a touristy spot. I heard that this is where a lot of Chinese immigrants settled along the jetties and they actually settled in their different family groups at the time or the region they were originally from. So we're going to go check it out first see what the place has to offer, and have a look around. So we're right across the street from one of the jetties. I didn't realize this road here must be a major road. I'm excited to see what the harbor looks like. I can see the houses right across the street over there. Even though it's super loud right here, we have to be quiet when we cross the street. I noticed something. There's another Penang Road famous, Chendal. So if you are from Penang, please tell us which one is the real one. Did we go to the real one? I guess they're all road famous. So I noticed we're walking on the ocean right now, where it's like sandy, almost like the beach. And it goes out further until it reaches the ocean. So as you can see behind me, the houses are built on top of these wooden boards that are stacked up straight so that it holds to the building and the, um, the floor to make it leveled with the, the road and the city behind us. And you can see the barnacles where the water used to be um, higher than it currently is. And let's try not to fall here because there's no safety nets. You just go right straight into the ocean. So I don't fall. <laughs> so I come back. I'm a little surprised because we had read that the clan jetties were really touristy. So I was expecting all these souvenir shops and little like food stands. But this jetty we just came to, it's all residences behind us. And there's a few tourists here and there. It's kind of peaceful. It's quiet, it's calm. I think this is a good place to stop if you want to see some local houses, but just make sure you stay quiet. We're at a sea library here. Make sure your phone's turned off and don't crunch a lot when you eat food. Yeah, it's no apples here. They're way too crunchy. There's the Malaysia, the, uh, the mainland island right behind us. It feels like it's so close as if I can like just swim across. It looks that way, but I'm pretty sure it's like further away than I think. 
Mm. If I had a jet ski though, <laughs> I'd take the jet ski across. It feels kind of cool here. As we walked across, we noticed there's no one with AC in their houses, but there's nice sea breeze coming in, so it's really cool. Okay, you ready to go back? Yeah. Let's go. Now this is the afternoon and we're gonna go to Little India and see what the streets have to offer. And I'm so ready to taste all the delicious food and see all the sights and the sound. I think we're gonna have a good day. As you can see, the streets really are coming alive at night. Okay, so right now we're walking back through the streets of Chinatown. But I know the minute we cross probably like two more blocks, then it's totally gonna change. Sari shops everywhere, the music playing, the street food you see at the street vendors, so it's pretty cool to see. Oh, so that's the uh, one really famous Indian actress from Three Idiots. Oh, yeah? So we are at the restaurant that we want to try. It's called Woodlands Restaurant, and it's apparently a vegan Indian restaurant, and we heard a lot of good reviews about this place, so we were very excited to go in and try some food, some curry, some biryani, some naan bread. What do you think? Are you excited? I'm excited. Let's go. Okay, so we made it to the Woodlands restaurant and we are super excited. This is an all vegetarian restaurant and dishes on the menu look amazing. Rice and noodle dishes. I think that's what I'll probably go after. Tongue tickling dishes. Ooh. Here's the thing. Why don't we order fish each that we know we will like and we'll order two things just like random on the menu. Okay. Yeah? Sounds good. I purposely picked the Bombay stuff because my friends from Bombay. So <laughs> I just had to. The restaurant has a lot of local eats where you can here, so I think it's gonna be good. And the one was described as like Indian pizza. So I oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The one, the tomato uh, pizza pan. Pizza pan. Pizza pan. Yeah. I'm not. I'm totally butchering that. Our drinks have arrived. So I got a sweet lassi. Yeah. Mm. Milky yogurt drink that's sweet. Tastes good. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? Gakurutu. Mm -hmm. Like the Gakurutu. little drink. So it's like a bread that's folded in half. Oh, it has some like onions and cheese in it. Oh, it may be just onions, never mind. Can they get into a roll? Mmm. Oh, wow. It's very crispy. See this brown part? Mm. Brown part is like real crispy. Mm. It's like we're eating chips. That's the like onion flavor. Mm. It's like super crispy. Okay, let me try the sauce. Looks like a flatbread. Yeah, so I see some tomatoes over here that's like coated. It's a nice char. Yeah. Mm. This bread is super light. It's nice and soft and spongy. Let me try the tomato part. Mmm, the tomato gives us such a nice acidity. It's super soft, almost like a pancake. Mm. Mm. There was like initial mintiness spice in the very beginning. I taste some like different kind of herbs and spices, but I, I can't name what the spices are. Mm. It's good. So I just got my set. 
and it looks absolutely delicious. There's the banana leaf at the bottom. I have naan. I have two different types of curry, a soup, some raw onion, a yogurt sauce, some pie, and some looks like vegetable biryani. It's really good, so I can't wait to dig in. I'm gonna try the curry. Really nice salty flavor, but it has a little bit of char. It's not spicy, but it packs a lot of flavor. I'll try the red one now. The non red is just freshly cooked, perfectly crispy. This crispy one and these two curries. Best, best thing you've had today. The flavor is here, even though we don't know how to describe them, they really pop a punch. And I don't even know if this is considered good or totally recommend. It's kind of hard to describe because these spices I'm not used to eating at all. So I can tell it's different, but I can't describe what it is. It's good, it's good. What, that's what I'll just say. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, we just got out, of the, got out of the restaurant, had some dinner. So I noticed the table behind us, they ordered like two non bread seats and like they were sharing a plate or two of sauces. But being big aggressive eaters and having a big stomach like Sarah and Seunghyun, we had to order like three dishes each. We ordered like a vegetable biryani, non breads, you know, two other things, two other things drinks, tea, and other breads. And lassi. 41 ring, you can't really beat that. It's really nice, but I mean, we're stuffed to like to our throat. Like, so stuffed. And now uh, we want to walk around and explore Little India. You know what? I think these stalls are like all kind of stayed together in their types. So all those restaurants and food vendors, they're all in one street packed together. All the um, clothing shops and jewelry places, they're all in one street together. So it's really interesting. We are walking by so many delicious looking foods and like sweets and stuff. And normally I'd be so tempted. We're just so stuffed. So we're going to have to wait for another day. I wish I had two stomachs. I'm really curious what it is. <laughs> it's a liquor shop. <laughs> booze store. Of course, old man gets excited over booze. There's like all of these old men sitting around, like yelling. You can hear them. <laughs> of course, everywhere you go, everyone's the same. Yep, get you there. Mm -hmm. Just decided to walk over to the waterfront. I know you can't see behind me because it's kind of dark, but there's this giant grass square, and it seems like there's so many families here. There's children flying kites. This definitely seems to be like the hangout spot. And we're gonna go down to the water and take a look and see what the park's like. Let's go. So the last time we were at the waterfront, it was like a congregation of all the couples. And no, I think that's where they all like meet up, holding hands, bringing out their kids out. It's like a family spot, a couple spot, you name it, everyone's out here. But it's really nice because the region's really cool. It's a great place to chill out. Yep, so we're gonna end the night here. We had a great day in tonight. And um, I can't wait to see what the rest of the week is like. You need to go to the bathroom, make some space in your stomach. Either way works, upward right. or downward. <laughs> I want my tongue tickled. <laughs> oh no. Painfully. The sun is so strong in Malaysia. I, I did. put so much sunscreen on. It's like someone painted you in like a red paint and held like a string over here <laughs> and just like poured that bucket over your shoulder. 